In this video, let's go ahead and practice multiplying and dividing fractions together. So in questions one through four, let's go ahead and find the product, which is the answer to a multiplication problem. In number one, we have this four fifths, this proper fraction multiplied by 15 sixteenths, another proper fraction. What we're gonna do here is when we multiply fractions, we can just actually multiply the numerators together. So multiply four by this 15 on top and multiply by the five and 16 together on the denominator, okay? So let's go ahead and just go ahead and do that. In the numerator, we have four times 15. So if you need to go ahead and pause and uh, figure that out, go ahead and do so. But four times 15 is going to be 60. I'm gonna put that in the numerator. And then five times 16, again, if you need to pause and think about that one, that's going to be 80. All right, now before we just say this is going to be the product, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can uh, simplify this thing. So it's gotta see if we have a, any common factors here. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the ladder method here and use uh, 60 over 80, put those next to each other. And let's go ahead and see if we can find any common factors between 60 and 80. So they both end in zero. So you know you can divide these both by 10. 10 goes into 60 six times and 10 goes into 80 eight times. So I'm gonna put six and eight here. Now I think that six and eight also have another common factor here. Let's go ahead and put two here, since six and eight are both even, and two goes into six three times, and two goes into eight four times. Now I don't think three and four have anything else in common besides one, so I think we're done here. Now from the side, this 10 and two, if you go ahead and multiply these together, that's gonna get us our GCF of 20. So that means that was the largest number that goes into both of these. So if we divide these both by 20, see what we're left with here we're gonna be left with this three fourths. So these numbers at the bottom are super helpful. So that just means that when you simplify the 60 over 80, the simplest way you could write this is say that the product here or the answer to a multiplication problem is gonna be three fourths. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that as our final answer. Okay, let's go ahead and check out number two. For number two, let's go ahead and see we have this uh, proper fraction of nine tenths multiplied by another proper fraction of eight fifteenths. Again, let's go start with uh, writing this as one fraction. So in the numerator, we have nine times eight. And in the denominator, we have 10 times 15. All right, if you ever need to pause to do the multiplication, feel free to do so. Nine times eight is going to be 72. And on the bottom, 10 times 15 is going to be 150. All right, so we multiplied and this is our product, but we have to see if we can uh, simplify our answer here. So let's go ahead and take this uh, 72 and 150 use that ladder or cake method and see if we can uh, find any common factors. And our divisibility rules will be super helpful here. So, um, so these numbers are bigger, right? And I think uh, I'll go with two, just because I know these are both even numbers. Uh, feel free to use a calculator to divide here or just pause and do the division, but half of 72 is gonna be 36. And if you take half of 150, that's gonna be 75. All right, we can't use two again here, but I do think we can simplify a little bit more. Um, let's go ahead and try three in our heads of what the rules are for divisibility. So uh, you, if it's a sum of the digits is a multiple of three, you can divide by three. So three plus six is nine. So you can divide 36 by three or nine. And seven plus five is 12. Uh, nine doesn't go into it, but three does. So let's go ahead and put a three on the side. Three goes into 36 12 times. And uh, three goes into 75 uh, 25 times. Now 12 and 25, I don't think they have anything in common, so we're gonna be done here. And so our greatest common factor is gonna be the product of these numbers on the side. So two times three is gonna be six, which means that that's the biggest number you could divide both of these numbers by. And what would we get when we divide? Don't actually do that division because you're actually just gonna get these two numbers here, right? So 72 divided by six is gonna be that 12. And then that 150 divided by six is gonna be 25. So this right here is gonna be our product, 12 uh, 25ths. All right, cool. Uh, let's try number three. For number three, we have a whole number here. We have nine multiplied by a mixed number of five and one six. So uh, we want everything to either be a proper fraction or a, an improper fraction. So let's go ahead and rewrite this nine real quick. Nine is going to be the same thing as nine over one. And then for this uh, five and one sixth, let's go ahead and see uh, if we go ahead and do big bottom plus the top or five times six, that's going to be 30. So that's the big bottom. 30 plus one is gonna be 31. So this is gonna be 31 over six, All right? That would be the improper version of this mixed number. Now you can rewrite this as one fraction, right? So this is gonna be nine multiplied by 31 and it's gonna be one multiplied by six. 
So again, don't worry about any uh, common denominators here. We don't need to when we are multiplying fractions, just uh, when we're adding and subtracting. So let's see, nine times 31. Well, I know nine times 30 is gonna be 270. And then nine times one is gonna be nine. So if we do 31 times nine, that should be 279. That's gonna be the numerator, 279. And then the denominator one times six is gonna be six. Okay, so this right here would be our product, but let's see again if we can uh, simplify this thing. So I'm gonna take this 279 and the six here. Let's see, what's a common number we could maybe divide these both by? Um, I don't think we can divide by two just because uh, 279 is an odd number, but what about three? Six uh, can definitely divide by three, but uh, for 279, two plus seven is nine, and nine plus nine is 18. Uh, that is a multiple of three, so we can divide it by three. So we go ahead and put a three on the outside here. Go ahead and feel free to pause to do the division. 279 divided by three, that's gonna be 93. And then six divided by three is going to be two. Now two is a prime number and it's even. Uh, 93 uh, can divide by three and 31 and one and 93, but none of those are in common with the two there. So our uh, greatest common factor between 279 and six is just this three here, right? So we're gonna go ahead and divide these, uh, the numerator and the denominator both by three. Then we're gonna be left with our uh, these numbers over here. Uh, and that's going to be 93 over two. Okay, and just for good measure, if we wanted to also turn this into a mixed number, we can definitely do that. So we take this 93 over two, you can just go ahead and do the long division for it. So two goes into nine, four times, four times two is eight. Nine minus eight is gonna be one, bring down this three. And then two into 13, that's what, six times? Six times two is 12. So you can see we have a remainder here of one. So another way you could write our uh, final product here is you can say this would be 46 and one half. Just another way of writing our product here. So I'm gonna go ahead and write it over here, but if uh, it doesn't really specify, you can use an improper fraction or the mixed number, both are good. Uh, for number four, it looks like we have a, uh, a, a mixed number here multiplied by another mixed number. So just like we just did in the last one, let's convert these into improper fractions. So two times seven is gonna be 14. 14 plus the four on top is going to be 18. So it's gonna be 18 over seven multiplied by, and for the second fraction here, one times six is going to be six. Six plus one is gonna be seven. So we're looking at seven over six. All right, so rewriting this as one fraction, we have 18 multiplied by seven on top and then seven multiplied by six on bottom. Again, if you need to pause to do any multiplication, feel free to do so. But 18 times seven should be 126 and then seven times six is going to be 42. Okay, um, so this is our product. But let's see if we can simplify this thing at all. So let's take this 126 and the 42. And let's see what they have in common here. They are both even numbers, so if we just wanna make these smaller right away, we can go ahead and divide these both by two. Two goes into 126, 63 times, and uh, two goes into 42, 21 times. Next here, if we wanna go ahead and divide these, I think I'm gonna use seven here. Seven times nine is going to be 63, and seven times three is 21. And then between nine and three, we can divide these both by three, right? So three goes into nine three times, and then three goes into three one time. And I don't think we can go any smaller here. So our uh, greatest common factor is gonna be the product of these three numbers on the side here. So two times seven is 14. 14 times the three is gonna be 42. So it looks like we can go ahead and divide this uh, 126 by 42 and the 42 by 42 for sure. And so 126 divided by 42 and 42 divided by 42 will get us these numbers at the bottom, this three and one. So we can just say our uh, product here is gonna be three over one, which uh, of course is just a whole number, right? So we can just go ahead and simplify this and say this is going to be three. So the, uh, that's the product of two and four sevenths and one and one sixth. All right, so we just practiced uh, four multiplication problems finding the product. Let's go ahead and try a few uh, division problems where we go ahead and find the quotient now. 
All right, so for number five, we have a uh, division problem. We have a proper fraction divided by uh, another proper fraction here. So our algorithm and process we're going to use here is we're always going to turn these division problems into multiplication problems. So keep in mind, you can rewrite all division problems as a multiplication problem. And if you solve that multiplication problem, the answer to that will be the answer to the original division problem. So it might sound a little confusing at first, but we're just going to turn each of these division problems into multiplication problems here. And the way to do that is I like to do this thing where we keep the first fraction, the k is for keep, we change the division to multiplication, and then that's a c, and then the f here means we're going to flip or write the reciprocal of this 12 over 25. So we could rewrite this problem as keep the 9 tenths, and then we're going to change the division to multiplication, and then we're going to flip this uh, 12 over 25 to make it 25 over 12. It turns out the answer to this multiplication problem here is going to be the same answer as to this division problem here, and it works 100% of the time. All right, let's go ahead and rewrite this as one fraction. This is going to be 9 multiplied by 25 over 10 multiplied by 12. All right, feel free to pause to do any multiplication here, but 25 times 9 is going to be 225, I believe. And then this 10 times 12 on bottom is 120. Okay, so this would be our quotient or the answer to the division problem, but these numbers are pretty big, right? So let's see if we can do uh, some, some simplifying here. So I'm gonna take this 225 and this 120 and see if we can find any common factors. All right, so let's see here. They both end in a five or a zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a five because I know you can divide these both by five. If you take this 225 and divide by five, I think it's gonna be 45 here. And if you take this 120 divided by 5, 120 divided by 5, I believe, is 24. Okay. Now, between 45 and 24, I think they have something else in common as well here. I think you can divide these both by 3. Uh, 3 times 15 is going to be 45, right? And then 3 times 8 is going to be 24. Now, 15 and 8, I don't think they have anything in common. I think they just have 1. So I think we're done here. The uh, greatest common factor here is 3 times 5, also known as 15. So you can go ahead and divide this one by 15 on top and divide the bottom here by 15 as well. And then what are we left with? We're going to be left with this 15 over 8. So writing this uh, simplified version here, we're going to have 15 over 8. Now that is an improper fraction, so if you wanted to rewrite this as a mixed number, you can as well. 8 fits into 15 one time with seven left over. So you can rewrite this as uh, one and seven eighths. That's gonna be the mixed number version of this quotient or the answer to a division problem. All right, cool. Uh, let's check out number six. Number six is another division problem. So let's, let's uh, take this uh, proper fraction and this improper fraction and go ahead and divide it. We'll see how many times that second fraction goes into the first fraction or fits inside. So we're gonna keep, we're gonna change, we're gonna flip. So we're going to go ahead and rewrite this problem as a multiplication problem. So we're going to take this 8 fifteenths, we're going to keep that one. And we're going to go ahead and multiply by the flipped version or the reciprocal of 25 over 12, which is 12 over 25. Okay, uh, let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, let's go ahead and write this as one fraction. So it's going to be 8 multiplied by 12 over 15 multiplied by 25. Okay, feel free to pause and multiply if you need to, but on the top here, uh, 8 times 12 is going to be 96, and on the bottom here, we can take this 25 and multiply it by 15, and that's going to end up being 375. Okay, so these are pretty big numbers. Let's see if we can uh, simplify this thing a bit. So uh, let's take this 96, and let's take this 375 and see if there's any common factors between the two numbers here. Uh, you can't divide them by two because this is even and this is odd. Uh, what about three? Well, nine plus six is 15, so three does go into 15. Uh, three plus seven is 10, 10 plus five is 15. So that both of these can divide by three, right? So um, let's see, 96 divided by three is gonna be 32. And if you take this 375 and divide that one by three, we're gonna end up here with 125. 
Okay. Now, if you go through and try to think of your factors of 32, 32 is just a two times two times two times two times two. That's its prime factorization. So it's all twos and uh, 125 can't have any twos inside of it, right? Because it's an odd number. So they have nothing in common. So that means we can do a lot of simplifying here, but the greatest common factor is going to be three. So that's what we can divide top and bottom both by. And so if we do that, what are we left with? Well, we're just going to be left with these numbers at the bottom here of uh, 32 over 125. So let's go ahead and write 32 over 125. And that right here is going to be our quotient or the answer to this division problem. All right, let's try a couple more practice problems where we're just dividing. In number seven, we have this uh, mixed number divided by a proper fraction. So let's go ahead and turn the mixed number into an improper fraction first here. So one times nine is going to be nine plus the seven on top is going to be 16. So rewriting this as an improper fraction, we have 16 over nine divided by, and then this 20 over 21 is already a proper fraction. So we can leave that alone. Now that we have just propers and impropers, we can go ahead and keep change and flip, or sometimes they call that uh, Kentucky chicken fry it or keep change flip. And so let's go ahead and turn this into a multiplication problem, right? So let's take the 16 over nine. Let's multiply this by 21 over 20, which is as one fraction going to be 16 times 21 on top, which is going to be nine times 20 on bottom. Okay. So let's go ahead and see what this is going to look like. So we're going to have 16 multiplied by 21 on top. 16 times 21 is going to be 336. That's going to be in the numerator. And on the bottom, 9 times 20 is going to be 180. That's going to be in the denominator. Okay. Let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this thing. So 336 and 180. It's pretty big numbers here, right? So it's good to know our divisibility rules. Uh, they're both even. So maybe I'll just start with a nice easy 2 here. And so do 336 divided by 2. That's going to be 168 and 180 divided by two is going to be 90. All right. So I think we can divide these both by two again, because they're both uh, ending in even number. So we really should have just divided by four a moment ago. I could have used my four rule. I just didn't think of it at the moment, but that's okay. 168 divided by two is 84 and 90 divided by two is going to be 45. All right. I think we can keep going. Uh, let's see, we can't divide by 2 again because 45 is odd, but uh, 8 plus 4 is 12, so 3 goes into that, and then 4 plus 5 is 9, and 3 goes into that as well. So we can divide these both by 3. Uh, 84 divided by 3 is going to be 28, and then 45 divided by 3 is going to be 15. So uh, eight, uh, this 28 and 15 don't have anything in common, I don't think, so I think we're, we're done here. So our GCF is going to be 2 times 2 times 3. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, which means our greatest common factor here is 12. We can divide top and bottom both by 12. And if we do that, what are we left with? Again, don't do the division, just use these numbers at the bottom here, right? Because 336 divided by 12 is going to be 28, and then 180 divided by 12, that's going to be 15 here. Turning this into a mixed number, 15 fits into 28 just one time, because two of them makes uh, 30, right? So we're off by 2. So we're going to have a remainder of 13, and so it's 13 out of 15 here. So our quotient here, or the answer to the division problem, is 1 and 13 fifteenths. That's how many times this uh, 20 over 21 will fit inside of this 1 and 7 ninths. All right, for number 8, it looks like we have this uh, mixed number divided by a mixed number. Uh, the answer to this problem definitely has to be a proper fraction or has to be uh, less than 1 because we can't fit this 6 and 1 fourth into 2 and 1 seventh more than one time because it's larger than it, right? So let's go ahead and just keep that in mind here. But as uh, improper fractions, 2 times 7 is 14 plus the 1 on top is going to be 15. So we're looking here at 15 sevenths. That's just going to be the improper version of that first fraction. And then divided by the second fraction here, 6 times 4 is 24, plus the one on top is going to be 25. So we're looking at 25 over 4. All right, so this is our division problem uh, written using just improper fractions. Let's go ahead and now turn it into or rewrite it as a multiplication problem. So the same thing is going to be 15 over 7 multiplied by 4 over 25. And rewriting this as one fraction, we have 15 times 4 on top. And then we have 7 times 25 on bottom. 
On top, 15 times four is gonna be 60. And on bottom here, seven times that 25 is gonna be 175. All right, I definitely think we can simplify this just because 60 and 175 both end in either zero or five. So we know we can divide them both by five, right? So uh, five into 60 is going to be 12. And if we take the 175 and divide that by five, that is going to be 35. All right, now 12 breaks into for its prime factorization is two, two, and three. Uh, 35 can't divide by two and it cannot divide by three. So um, we're all done here. Five is our greatest common factor. So if we divide top by five and divide the bottom by five, we're gonna end up with these lovely numbers at the bottom, this 12 and 35. So let's go ahead and put this 12 35ths, which makes sense. We said earlier it had to be a proper fraction, right? It's not gonna fit in, the six and one quarter is not gonna fit into two and one sevenths a whole number of times. All right, cool, so that's our quotient. All right, now that we've tried uh, four multiplication problems and four division problems, let's try just two quick application problems here. So for nine and 10, let's go ahead and either find the area or the missing dimension. For number nine, it says, given that the length of a rectangle is three and one eighth meters and the width is six and four fifths meters, determine the area of this rectangle. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch this real quick. And it tells in the problem that the length here is going to be three and one eighth meters. And they also tell us that the width here is going to be six and four fifths meters. They don't tell us the area, right? So the area is something that we're gonna go ahead and figure out together here. So what is the formula to find the area of a rectangle? Well, to find the area of a rectangle, we just go ahead and multiply the length by the width, right? That's that formula. Um, so let's go ahead and say here that in this case, the area is gonna be equal to the length, which is going to be three and one eighth meters multiplied by the width, which is gonna be six and four fifths meters. So if we can multiply mixed numbers, then we can find the area of this rectangle. All right, so let's see here. Uh, we gotta turn the three and eighth, one eighth as a improper fraction. So three times eight is 24 plus one, that's gonna be 25. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be 25 over eight multiplied by, and then for the six and four fifths, six times five is gonna be 30 plus this four is gonna be 34 and it's gonna be over five. Okay, so this is going to be uh, the, the fractions, the mixed numbers written as improper fractions. So if we wanna rewrite this as a uh, one fraction, we can go ahead and do so. It's gonna be essentially what, 25 times 34 for the top, and then eight times five, which is gonna be our bottom, right? So eight times five, I'm just gonna write it as 40 right away. Again, don't worry about common denominators, just go ahead and multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms. And on top, uh, 25 times this 34, is gonna be 850. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this thing a bit. So we have 850 and we have 40. And if we go ahead and divide these both by uh, 10, we're gonna get 85 and we're gonna get four. I don't think we can uh, simplify this any more here, right? Because four just breaks into a two times two and 85 is odd. So that means this 10 on the side here is gonna be our GCF, or greatest common factor. So we can go ahead and divide both of these by 10. If we go ahead and do so, then we're gonna end up with these numbers at the bottom, right? So this 85 and four, that is gonna be our product. It's gonna be 85 over four. So what's that as a mixed number? Well, we can take this 85 and four and just do some uh, long division on the side. So 85 divided by four, uh, let's see, four goes into eight two times, two times four is eight. The remainder here is gonna be zero. Bring down that five. Four into five is one time, one times four is four. So five minus four is gonna be one. So you could also rewrite this as the area here would be as a mixed number. We could say it's gonna be 21 and one fourth. Putting our answer over here, this is gonna be 21 and one fourth meters squared. That would be the area of this rectangle. All right, cool. Let's try out number 10. Number 10, it says, given that the area of the rectangle is five and one third square inches and the width is two and six sevenths inches, determine the length of the rectangle. All right, so just making a sketch real quick, let's go ahead and say that this is going to be the width and this is going to be the length here, okay? Um, we, let's see what information we're given. So for the length here, uh, we're gonna say the length here, uh, we don't know what it is, I don't think, right? Where it says determine the length, so let's leave that blank. Uh, the width here, the width they tell us is gonna be this uh, 
two and six sevenths inches. So we know how wide this rectangle is. And uh, for the area, last time we didn't know it, so we had to solve for it, but this time we actually do know it. It's five and one third uh, square inches. Okay, so slightly different problem here. So in the last problem, we knew that we had to multiply the L and the W to get the A or the area. This time we don't know the L, but we do know the W and the A for the area. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do is that we're actually gonna take this area and divide by the width, and that'll tell us the length here. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but we can maybe rewrite this formula. So we know that area is equal to length times width, right? And I hope that makes sense. Uh, but another way you could say this, if we're not looking for the area, we don't want the A by itself, we can say that the length or the piece that we don't know is gonna be equal to the area divided by whatever the width is, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and see if we can now uh, plug some things in here. So the length here we know is, uh, going to be equal to the area, which is five and one third divided by this uh, two and six sevenths. All right. So good thing we've been practicing how to divide fractions here. So we, we need some uh, improper fractions, so no mixed numbers. So let's go ahead and convert these. So five times three is 15. 15 plus the one on top is going to be 16. So this is going to be 16 over three divided by and then we have two times seven, which is 14 plus the six, that's gonna be 20. So we're dividing by 20 over seven. Now, now that we have improper fractions, we can turn this into a multiplication problem. If we keep change flip or Kentucky chicken fry, this is gonna be what? 16 over three multiplied by seven over 20. All right, so let's see. If we go ahead and find the numerator here, 16 times seven is going to be 112. And then the three times 20 is going to be 60. All right, so let's see. I think we can simplify this thing a bit here. So if we take this 112 and the 60, they're both even numbers, okay? And then so we can divide these both by two. We're gonna get 56 and 30. And uh, these are both even numbers again, right? So we can divide these both by two. So that's gonna be 28 over 15. 28 prime factorization is two times two times seven and 15's prime factorization is just three times five. So I don't think they have anything in common besides one. So two times two would get us our greatest common factor of four. So we can divide these both by four. And if we do that, we're gonna be left with this 28 over 15. So put this 28 and 15 right over here. And if you wanna write it as a mixed number too, you can say this is gonna be one, 15 goes into 28 one time, with 13 left over, so it's gonna be one and 13 15 So this right here would be the length of this rectangle. It's one and 13 15 inches. And so when we were given the area and the width of this rectangle, if we go ahead and divide the area divided by the width, we end up getting the length of one and 13 15 inches. All right, so there you have 10 different practice problems where we hopefully got a little bit more comfortable with multiplying and dividing fractions. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep it the great work that you're already doing.